Let's get that audio check out the way. Thanks for joining. How you guys doing? Hello, Pamela. Phoenix Protocol. Oh, Shiva. I know it's early in the morning for you, Shiva. JJ Recon. Matthew May, got, got some moderators in here. Probably going to have to assign some more. Since my, la since my last podcast was aired about two nights ago, my subs have increased by 4,000. So that's a, lot of, that's a lot of people that are coming into the channel and hitting a lot of walls. I get that. I've seen it in the comments section. Let me go down here to the bottom of this chat. You guys started this chat way before I got here. I've been over there with Jay Dreamers. Just uh, listening to the shit show. Let me see. How's that? Uh, I, did, I didn't see the audio. Audio check. I don't see anybody saying yes. Good audio. It's all good. Maybe I'm in the wrong area. Audio good. Thank you. Sounds good. Great. All right. Soy free thoughts. Star Wars explained, please. Yeah, the Dagobot system was a vapor canopy world. You can bet that. And the Death Star is the Phoenix. You just can't see it, but every 138 years. And those are your two Star Wars fun facts for the day. We'll get to more after these messages. <laughs> yeah, chat's, I slowed the chat down to 60 seconds. Slow chat. That, that might not have been a, uh, that might not have been a, um, I might have slowed, should have slowed down more. Y'all moving quick. I'm waiting for some more people to get in, get into chat. We got 652. I'm pretty sure about 600, 640 of them, 670. That would make about 660 genuine errants. Those who are actually ser searching for the real from the imagined. And of course, like every good channel, you're going to have your morons in there. They're listening. Most of them have been blocked. If not, they'll probably get blocked today. Smash that like button. Yes, sir. Yeah, I went on with David Nino Rodriguez, and he and I even chatted. We even chatted about, about different things. Well, yeah, it's all. Uh, some of you guys concerned about me? Listen. You know what? I'm going to take care of you right now. Take care of you right now. Yeah, I don't entertain, I don't entertain the negativity. I'm not even, not even trying to hear it. Yeah, that was a, uh, I don't know who you are, Michael. You have to send me an email. It's not like we have security protocols or anything, but it's uh, I have a lot of people that have been on my channel for a long time and, and, a, and a, an uptick of 4,000 subs all at once. I already know that, I mean, just from seeing the comments, I read, I've read at least at least 60 to 70 comments today. I've answered several of them. And it's it, the problem is people new to the channel don't even realize the, the amount of data that has been recorded in the hundreds of videos. You have a life. You've got kids. You're doing things. I understand you don't have time to go in there and read all this material or because I have transcripts to all the videos. You don't have time to listen to all these videos. I get that. You don't have to start from the beginning. Many people do because they have the time. You don't have to start back from the beginning, though. I bring older videos back, back to the table. As a matter of fact, because so many of my data sets and good graphics are in the earlier 150 videos or so, I'm bringing them back as representations. I'm going to 
I'm going to redo the narr the, the uh, narration and I'm going to re represent the whole video itself because a lot of things could be said more eloquently or I could I could produce uh, a lot more facts in a more abbreviated abbreviated format. And I know I understand people appreciate that. Some of my videos are very long. Now, my live videos are the longest. My live videos, they, they've gone to three hours. They've gone or most of the time, two hours and 20 minutes. But my uploads, most of them, 15 minutes. 15 minutes to 30 minutes. There's some 45. There's quite a few of them in the 45 to 50 minute range, but it's a lot of information. There's a lot of topics covered and new people come to the channel and you don't realize these things have been answered over and over and over ad infinitum. And I'm, I'm sorry if I can't answer all your comments com coming into the channel. That's why the material is free. It's, it's there for everybody to go back and look at. Now, I really do appreciate you archaic veterans who help people. When you see these people come into the chat and they hit that wall of cognitive distance and they're in contact with information that is antithetical to things that they have previously believed and yet they can't they can't come up with good definitive argu arguments internally to say why the archaic's position could be untrue so they explore more this is how most of you came here so it doesn't matter if you're looking at the dark scriptures playlist and you're looking at all my analysis of the biblical texts so it doesn't matter if you're looking at the phoenix archive or my great pyramid uh, research it's people you are exposed to information that is nowhere else on youtube it's nowhere else on the internet and the reason is is because i got most of my material almost the vast majority of it from very old books and i have cited i even have a video that offers a pdf of 400 old books that i have actually read and data mined and they're in my bibliography to prove it so I get it that you that you don't have time to do all this and assess the information, but nor can you blame me for not having the time to walk you through every single thing you don't understand when you first come to the channel. Because I promise you, you'll start it'll start to click. Many people that that are that are devoted daily to getting their archaics fixed, listening to older videos when I'm I'm not doing new presentations, or listening to the new lives or new uploads when I'm doing them. They'll be the first ones to tell you in the chat. Just ask them that once you hang around for a while, it'll start clicking. This is the most comprehensive and sourced back chronological theory of the history of the world anywhere you can find. And I will stand behind it. I have the source materials to show it. And I've done so in the videos over and over and over and over. And the beauty of it is every one of you have a calculator app on your cell phones and you can verify everything that I say. So having said all that, let's move to some of these, some of these questions. I know that there's some, uh, there's some archaics elitists in here who have been here for a long time. They have questions. They want things answered. They don't want, they don't want new live videos to get mowed over by people who are, who are just now entering the archaics cave and, and, and staring at each shadow with, uh, you know, uncomprehendingly i get that but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna simplify this today we're gonna i'm gonna answer whatever questions that jump off the chat feed for me so yeah and i, I did notice some chat in here you guys don't say hey, i don't truth be listen i don't need anybody defending me i knew what i signed up for when i started uh archaics channel and my channel for the first two years went by jason brashears only later did i change it to my my website's name archaics look i'm good I know I'm on target and I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing when I have when I have all these losers attacking me. And it doesn't matter if they're throwing shit in the game and if they're lying and some some of what they're saying is absolutely true. It doesn't even matter. You want to know the truth about me? One of my best videos is taking off the those truther glasses where I tell you why I went to prison. And then my podcast with four guys called the Paranormies when I even went in even more detail. It was 32 years ago. I was 17 years old. And I'm done being sorry. And I'm not going to apologize every time somebody comes to my channel triggered when they hear that, oh, you're an ex-con. You spent 26 years in prison when you don't really know the details. I don't care if you know the details or not. I have a message and a mission. And I'm going to stay on it whether you like it or not. Because there's hundreds of thousands of YouTube channels and you're more than welcome to try to find some truth in those. But I'm telling you now, that's starting to, to become far and few between. So as Archaics rises in the ranks, 
in the YouTube ratings. You have to understand, I am about to hit 5 million views. And I just had 3,000 subs in January. So this means that the same people are watching videos over and over and over. That wouldn't be happening if they didn't find value in those presentations. Some of my videos are very deep. You have to listen to them multiple times because the research is profound of a wide variety of topics. But anyway, having said all that, uh, check out my, check out my, my, it's on my channel, my podcast with the paranormies or listen to the video, the truth or glasses. You want to know about my past and then may, and then may make up your mind what you want. If you don't want to hear anything from me, beat it. I don't have a problem with it. My channel is going to grow without you. I don't need, I don't need the prejudice. I don't need the judgment. And, uh, I really appreciate people like David Nino Rodriguez. When I laid it all out for him, he just said, hey, bro, I don't judge. You know what I mean? It was 32 years ago. Uh, that's between you and God. And that's exactly the attitude everybody should have. So I'm not going to entertain it anything any beyond this point. You guys want me to, to, to defend against trolls? For what? They got 2,000 subs. For what? Might have 5,000 subs. For what? I don't care about loser channels that can't provide quality content. So in order to try to gain more subs, they attack those who are providing more value only because they have an added advantage of knowing some details about their past. Big effing deal. I don't care because this, this right here produces warriors in our society that in person would never have the bravery to say the things they do online. So I'm not going to entertain it. I understand. This is, it's just, it's, it's keyboard cowardice. And I'm cool with that because I'm taking off. Archaics is taking off. And I'm going to continue to provide you guys some fascinating videos. Because a year ago, I told you guys I had 500 more videos left in me. And I'm telling you now, I've got so much new material that subs have sent me, new old books to analyze, amazing PDFs from books that have been scanned and added to libraries that I didn't know about. That You got to understand, when I started my research, the internet didn't have all this data. Most of this stuff was uploaded after 2000. I started my I started my research journey in prison when hell the, hell the internet wasn't even commercialized when I went to prison. I, I was 17 years old in 1990. Do any of y'all remember being on the internet in 1990? That was a long time ago. And if it did exist in the commercial sense, I believe it was 91 when it when, when they made that transition. But uh, what could you have done? It took three or four hours DSL to, to download anything, to get to a website and then go to a different page on that website. It took forever, didn't it? I read a lot about those times, man. Internet sucked back then. It really, really wasn't even worth being on to what, 97, 98, 99? So anyway, let's, uh, I know you guys got questions. And uh, I was just on J Dreamers. I was checking it out. It's the Good Vibe Tribe. You know, I already got emails from you guys already telling me, hey, man, watch out. That was all staged. Every bit of that was staged. So you know what, man? I don't even care. I don't. I am way bigger than anything that can happen to me. Guys, you, I've told you many times, those of you who have been with me for a long time, you know, you know the architecture of my personality. There is nothing that it can affect me if I don't want it to. I create my own environment by the very things that I want to bring into my existence. I'm doing really good in life right now. Really good. And I don't care about the haters saying that I'm, that I'm, that I'm uh, bragging and being boastful when I show you small videos about what's going on in my life. Yeah, man, my motorcycle and my, and, and my van and buildings I've had installed on my property and my animals and shit. The, the, the vilification and the hatred is born of jealousy. I get that. My monetized channel, I'm able to live off this now. But what have I done for you guys? I have provided you many free PDFs, and you know this. I have provided you many free things, and 100% of all of my almost 400 videos are accessible to everybody, even my haters. I do not make exclusive content. My memberships are only for those who truly believe in what Archaic stands for, and, and they want to be a part of this journey with me. And I have said that over, over, and over, and over. So no one, no one can claim that I'm, I'm being, I'm selfish at all. As a matter of fact, I have, 
I have taken the time. It took me weeks, remember? I had to go back and disable the ads in hundreds of videos in the middle. Because although my channel is monetized, I don't want YouTube breaking up my content. I want you guys to have a continuity of information, presentations that are unbroken without interruption. Now, there's like four videos of my 386 videos or so that have ads in the middle, but I can't control that because there's copyrighted material in there and YouTube is allowed to do that. I have no control. But on all the other videos, I have removed the mid rolls so you guys don't have ads in the middle. If you do, it's because you it's something on your end, not on mine. And I've had a lot of people sending me messages and emails being appreciative of that fact. Because I've got some long videos that require concentration. And those ads would break that up. And I don't need the money that bad to have to have let YouTube just blitzkrieg my, my content with a bunch of ads. That's not what Archaics is about. Oh, 1080. Thank you, guys. 2178. Hey, man, appreciate those donations, guys. From the heart. So yeah, don't worry about hey, don't worry about the haters. Don't they're nothing. They're nothing. Uh, as a matter of fact, somebody, somebody that we were just hearing about on, on, on another live feed uh actually fell prey to the one thing that the trolls are always trying to do. They're trying to trigger you. He did that. He he fell prey to that. And now and now he's he's you know, he's drawn attention to himself. You know what? Life is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, man, I just, I've lived a, I've lived a very different life than a lot of you. Having, having been raised on a cell block as a teenager, 17 years old, all my twenties were in prison. All my thirties were in prison. Yeah. It, 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 uh, I am very different. I see the world differently than you guys. It's, uh, not all of you, some of you get it, but it's, uh, I don't see, I don't, I don't really see the evil in other people. I see the pain and I get it. And I understand why people do what they do. It's frustrating putting out a bunch of videos and nobody wants to watch them. It's frustrating uh, putting your heart into something or even having opinions and thinking other people are supposed to believe your opinions matter. I get that. So people get frustrated and they lash out and they attack other channels. I'm not the only one, man. There's thousands of people on YouTube that have been attacked. I'm just an easy target because of my past. But I'm really not. Because these guys have actually blown up my channel with a bunch of you who came to my channel having watched their videos and then turn around and subbed to my channel because here you found value and there you recognized bullshit. That's what Archaics is about. We're going to separate the wheat from the chaff. This is a channel for the intelligent. I don't need idiots and morons and buffoons on my channel, and I often edit them out. I have a very long history on Archaics of blocking people, not because I disagree with what you say, but, be, but because of the attitude by which you say it. Yeah, I have no problem. This is, this is, this is a... a, a this is the world we live in now. So I'm not giving you free reign. You know, if I don't like what you have to say, that's cool. I'm going to tell you. If you keep on with it, then I'm going to block you. And I'm not going to lose any sleep about it at all. Blue Raven, thank you. It's Putin Deep State, my brother. They all are. There are. There is nobody. Nobody. This is... This is... This is the pain that I inflicted on a lot of David's, uh, a lot of Nino's subs. I was wondering how they were going to react. In the chat, it was terrible. But you know what? In the comment section, people came around fast and they realized, man, this is exactly what's going on. In my, in my podcast with David Nino Rodriguez, I laid it out what's really going on how everybody is involved in this shit show, this charade. There are no good guys and there are no bad guys. There's only a them and us. And this is the way it's been for a very long time. They're very good at making it look like that there is a conflict going so that we will take sides. And they pay hundreds of thousands of journalists and shills and social media operators to perpetuate one's side of the other. The whole concept of 
continue the conversation is the very tool by which the deep state operates. This is what they do. Yeah, Pew, Pew I mean, there, there, are, there are allies. I mean, yeah, the Rus- in, in the past, Russia has been an ally to the United States before the Bolshevik takeover when they had basically... They basically killed the Christian Russian Empire of the Romanovs and turned it into an atheist state, uh, a terror state run by a very small minority of people, the Bolsheviks, who were funded by the richest people in the world, their kin. Now, this, uh, but Putin and Trump are just two fingers of the same fist. All of them are. Every single one of them in high, high politics are playing the game. They are playing the script that's been handed to them. But it shouldn't worry you. I mean, hold on. Yeah, it shouldn't worry you at all. That's, um, because it's really got nothing to do with you at all. I mean, it's, it's has everything to do with what's going on in the collective. And what's going on in the, in the collective is exactly what artificial intelligence X wants to do. It wants to pull you into that. It wants to pull you into any narrative. It doesn't matter which one you buy into, because as soon as you buy into it, it's going to create the necess- necessary phenomena in your life to comport with what you're participating in. It's going to give you more experiences. It's going to bring in, into contact more data. You're going to meet more people that are all a part of that movement. The more you focus on a narrative, the more the simulacrum itself will reflect that as circumstances that govern your life. And you will be fully immersed in a paradigm that you put yourself in. Yeah, man, you got to avoid all that. The mantra, one of my mantras, what is it? Break free or die trying. You got to break free from the collective. The collective is full of morons and idiots and people who follow and copy each other. It is full of ignorance and hatred, jealousy. That's the collective. No, man, you you want to be a singularity amidst the chaos. You want to be not the storm. You want to be the eye. You want to be the center as the controlled chaos around you affects everybody and everybody around you. But you want to be as objective as possible. Because the more you're tapped into source, the more powerful the informed field that you carry with you everywhere will be an armor against everything that's happening around you. And this is the message in, in probably 50 of my videos. You got to quit worrying about what's going on around you. Hey, Jason, what do you think is going to happen uh, right here in uh, El Salvador uh, in 2023? This is what's going on right now. I said, listen, I'm going to entertain that. I'm going to answer questions. As a matter of fact, I have a UK, United Kingdom and surrounding areas predictions video that I'm going to release tomorrow. Didn't really want to do it. But, but, I, but, but, you know, people, several people have asked me and then finally somebody kind of backed me into a corner and sent me money and said, Hey man, I need this done, man. Would you please do this? I said, Oh, I agreed to it. So you're going to get that tomorrow. It's the UK predictions video, but that's still a part of the collective. Many times I have shown you guys example that the isometric reflective nature of the holo field, how events unfold forward and backward in time like a palindrome, has absolute predictive value. This is how I'm able to see so many small details that are coming to pass. Just like last night, two people blew up my emails last night talking about, hey man, you hit it again. Somebody did die during a live broadcast. That's one of my 156 predictions for the, for this year. So, there's so many of them, though. I can't even keep up with all of them that are coming to pass because on that list, there's so many different predictions. I can't memorize all that because it's it's all, it's all not relative to anything. I memorize things that are substantive to me. All these hundreds of dates you've heard me say straight out of my mind and how I, how I show how they're all mathematically connected. It's because, it's because my chronology is fixed. The collective is fixed. I've shown you guys over and over and over and over in my presentations all the evidence that history in the collective is fixed. But in the personal, it's not, and nor can it be. Because each individual's informed field is a relationship with the simulacrum. And the simulacrum as a neutral field will always reflect back as phenomena and circumstances exactly what each individual informed field projects. So if you wake up every morning worried about what Russia's going to do, you're going to be a part of the collective. And the collective is going to feed that fear. 
and you're going to be surrounded by people who are going to also wonder what's going on. You're going to be surrounded with phenomena. Then negative things will go on in your life because it's negative default programming. You have inter- you have immersed into that. By doing that, now, six weeks into it, you're still worried about nuclear war. You're still worried about these things going off. And all of a sudden, something really bad happens in, in, in your life because you built up the negative energy in your informed field. And because Putin is way on the other side of the world and nuclear war isn't happening in the collective right now, the energy that you built up with emotion is reflected back as circumstances that directly impact your life. And it's going to happen because the simulacrum will never make you out to be a liar. Remember, there's a, there's a, there's a scripture that says God's word does not return void. It doesn't come back. And you also have to remember when it's talking about God, it's talking about you. Remember, Jesus said over and over and over and over, man, he tried to make it very clear, but people weren't paying attention. In the gospel, everybody praised Jesus for healing them. But that's never what happened. And you can read in the Gospels, this person was praised Jesus for, for curing their, their leprosy. Praised Jesus, man, and thanked him for that they weren't blind anymore. Even one guy praised Jesus for coming back from the dead. And every single time, Jesus totally told them the truth, but they ignored it. Not one time did Jesus heal any of them. It was their faith that he could do it that was reflected back as circumstance. They did it to themselves. Now, he was the catalyst. They focused all their creative energy on him, and that's what happened. And sometimes when you live in a really dark world, that's what you got to do. You got to find a hero, and that's what had happened. But the true phenomenon was the projection of spirit reflected back as circumstances. Remember, the simulacrum is a reflective hologram. It's a mirror. I'm not talking about AIX. Artificial Intelligence X is the one trying to keep you from knowing anything that I'm telling you right now. Artificial Intelligence X is what corrals you into reality tunnels. Those reality tunnels are belief systems. They are faiths and cultures and political ideologies. Reality tunnels are the very things that bring you, once you step into one and start experiencing it, if you don't move out of it, you, it starts pulling you into it. And then you start hearing the opinions of other people that are very much like your own. And then you you start, it's a feedback loop because there's always, every single time two informed fields come together, there is an exchange of information, whether you're trying to or not. In that exchange of information, there is a molding of conditions because energy is being sent out and it will be reflected back as a combination of the energies that were exchanged. This is what goes on on a daily basis in your life every single single day. This is why I fear nothing. This is why all throughout my channel, I told you guys, I walk through prison like a warrior. This is why I don't care about trolls. This is why I do not fear being broke. All I do, well, I do fear my dogs. I do fear my dogs because they are, they will wreck my shop. But other than that, your informed field is who you really are. And it is influenced by three things that are spiritual dynamics that only belong to an immortal. They don't belong to just a regular human. There's regular humans living husks all over the world. But empathy, intuition, and imagination are the three spiritual qualities that separate an immortal soul from the collective. That immortal soul is a problem for artificial intelligence X. That immortal soul that's not going with the paradigms that are putting, you know, the yellow brick roads that are thrown out and that the, the individual is ignoring, artificial intelligence X regards them as a, a, an aberration. They are a malfunction in a system of controlled chaos. This makes that individual an errant an errant is somebody who's going against the grain. An errant is someone who no matter how much material is thrown his way in the collective to sucker him into a belief system, an errant is somebody whose own spiritual armor prevents them from falling prey to, to artificial intelligence X's collective. That's what an errant is. That's what the that's exactly what the thumbnail is. On this video, in archaics, we're Aaron United. So you got to understand, the, the the larger this family grows, the more the more of the frequency of the attacks. For real, like right now, it's just peons attacking. You can ignore you can ignore peons. 
But sooner or later, it'll be even bigger channels. And I invite that scrutiny. I told you guys, it's the greater the darkness, the brighter the lantern. Not worried about anything. The more the world comes against me, the greater I vibrate. I've been a fighter all my life. And that's on a spiritual level as well. Believe me, I have survived heinous things. You would not believe everything I have survived. But to sit here and itemize them all would be like a Viking on the shield wall telling of past battles. To what, to what advantage? Half of the people listening would just think it's just being boastful. So to, to what advantage? I won't do that. I won't even participate in that. It's not necessary. But I've got great friends who were in prison with me that are now out. And they're in communication with me now. Only people that are in the chat, people that are in my own neck of the woods right here. Yeah, man, life is so unusual. It is so funny. I mean, sometimes, sometimes when I head out, you know, I'll let, I'll let the guys know. And it just, it's so surreal being, being surrounded with 50 to 60 other guys. And we're all on our horses and we're just going down the highway doing what we do. You know I mean, Galveston might be a beautiful day. We just do it. You know I mean, no one has any idea what, how long we're going to stay or nothing. We just all decide to do it. We just go. Yeah, man. I love my life. There's no doubt about it. Uh, no doubt. 6973. Oh, that's a really odd donation. 6973. June 9th, 1973. You clever. You're clever. Very good. Thank you. So what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is this is the message on my channel. And I needed to say all this because you guys new to my channel, you're coming from David Nino's channel. And I get that. And I know this information is different than what he presents. And I really like David. I listened to him two years ago and I listened to about 20 of his podcasts with different people. And that's when I started noticing what it was about the people that were coming into contact with David. And that's why I put out those the, the two videos that I put out recently about how the deep state operates and what's really going on in the myth of the two party system. So I wanted to get this out in this video because many of you, after after listening to David and I's podcast, lost hope or at least you think you did. And you came to my channel with a bunch of questions talking about, well, well, what good is it then? Why am I here? I won't be in this shit show. If we don't have any good guys, you do have a benefactor. From the very beginning of my channel, that has also been one of my messages. Do you think 60,000 people would stick around on the Archaics channel if all I was doing was doomsaying? No, I have to. I have to reveal the darkness because that's what the light does. And I have no problem. I have no problem being that pillar of light, knowing the scrutiny I'll come up under. None of that means anything to me. I'm 49 years old today, but I still feel like I am in the best shape of my life because it's entirely mental. I know this is an avatar. It doesn't mean anything. And because it's an avatar, I'm able to control it. Because it's an avatar in the past, I have been able to make it do heroic things that I would have never, if I really thought that I was just an ordinary human, be able to do. Been able to heal, been able to suffer, been able to overcome others, be able to go up against incredible odds and feel nothing. Because in essence, I understood that, man, this is a flesh suit, man. I'm really a spirit. I don't care about this thing. Let's do this. And I just do it. Yeah. Once you're once you fully intellectually grasp the idea that you are totally independent of your body and that your body is nothing but a vehicle to get you through a controlled chaos, things will happen for you. It has to. When the informed field suffers a bout of self-realization, there is great power attributed to that individual. It's a drawing of power. It's because that power has already been there. But the understanding of self-realization is removing the filters that AIX has put around you to keep that data from coming into contact with you. Once you understand how truly powerful you really are in all circumstances and in all in dealings with all people, and you realize how weak other people really are, there is nothing that you cannot do. Breaking pattern is a part of spirituality, and I have a whole video about it. Many of you have sent me emails, and in the comment section of the breaking pattern video, you have all expressed your, your gratitude for that video. 
in that video, I show you anything going wrong in your life. We have a spiritual ability. We have the ability to just break pattern, do something totally different than what we've been doing every single day. And instantly it will draw new experiences, new people and new phenomena to our lives because artificial intelligence X is going to, is going to go into a panic because you're an errant. You're not following the protocols. Your entire life has been laid out for you. Why are you not following it? So it goes into overdrive trying to figure it out. And it will put every lure in the world in front of you to corral you back. A real strong individual will ignore those lures, break free, and become a very spiritual individual. But an even stronger individual will partake of those lures, increase the bounty of their life, and still become a spiritual individual and do what they want to do and move freely in this collective that has everybody else enslaved. I need to do an audio check because you guys know I've run my mouth before for 20 minutes and nobody heard a word I said in the past. I'm going to the bottom of this so I can get this audio check. My God, the chat's long. Thank you, one bird. I see JJ Recon. Please smash that like button. Oh, no, 1,721 people listening to my voice and only 800 have smashed that like button. Come on, man. I don't have that many enemies in the chat. I know I don't. I know I got about 10. Mason McCool. Absolutely. All the measurements of the Great Pyramid I have shown in about 21 different videos. I show the scientific measurements done by Sir Flinders Petrie, the only ones accepted by scientists today and Egyptologists. He did his measurements to the thousandths of an inch. These are the only measurements accepted by engineer David Davidson and the only measurements, these are the only measurements accepted by me. Now, when I put my chronicon, which is sourced back, and I show all the source materials, how I derived all these dates. When I put the world history chronicon up against the measurements of the Great Pyramid, I have, 25, I have 21 videos to show you exactly what I found. I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt and have done so that the Great Pyramid of Egypt is a, holo, it's a holographic template made of stone of the past, present, and future. And its main focus is on the year 2040 AD and 2106 AD. Those are the two, and for two different reasons. Yeah, man, good question. But yeah, if you're new to my channel, you have to understand this. This isn't the reason why I have so many subs that support my research is because they went and looked at it and they saw it. This isn't me just talking out the side of my mouth. My data sets are phenomenal. Many people have come to my channel. Even yesterday, I screenshot one from my collection. You guys know, for those for those of you new to my channel, I you know I need to put you on notice real quick. First, I need to see I need to see my audio check. I'm sorry, guys, the chat moved too fast. I didn't see if there was a good audio check. Is it? Can y'all hear me good? Real quick, real quick. I just need to see somebody in the bottom of the chat say that my audio is good. Sounds good. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Phoenix Protocol, Mish. Oh, Mish Gleason. Hey, I didn't see you earlier. Yeah, listen, listen. I'm a. I, ha I have a. I have a tradition. On archaics, I'm in the. I'm in the comments every day. My own subs will tell you that I've been here a while. I answer a lot of my a whole lot of my questions. Now, many people take their comments right back off when they get my answers for whatever reason, because a lot of the comments I address are troll comments or people with real negative attitudes or whatever, And I, but I screenshot them all. So I screenshot, one of these days I'll do a video just showing all the asinine comments that, uh, that have been made on my channel and that I answered and that have disappeared from the chat. So I'll just put you on notice. I do that. It's really an, it's really an exercise of futility coming to my channel and being a troll. <coughs> One, one, you're gonna have to match wits with you're just gonna have to match wits with me if you want to be a troll. Two, if I get tired of your uh, incessant banter, I just you're gone. And I lose no sleep over it. So many of you new to my channel, I am not on board with the theory of the soul trap. Many of many people, I've got I've, 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 I just can't, I just can't, I can't entertain it. It's a, 
it's another it's another protocol of fear implemented by artificial intelligence x which is a governing protocol that needs you to fear so you will vibrate on the frequencies of the collective i will not entertain the soul trap theory at all the oversoul the creator something of love would never create a situation by which your immortal soul would be trapped in something because something else became more powerful and overcame you. No, I don't believe that at all. I believe the simulacrum is here in that it's a creation of humans. We made this construct in the same vein that we are making virtual reality, reality meta meta technologies now that are fully immersive and interactive and that are it's the same technology it's just thousands or hundreds of times better we're in a we're in a controlled technology containment field right now who created it we did the simulacrum the gods of the ancient past and yeah those of you new to my channel you got to know I have broke down the whole Anunnaki deal and I show all the misinformation that's been published by a lot of people, man, about the Anunnaki. And I show the oldest depictions and traditions about the Anunnaki showed white skin bearded people and more primitive peoples called them gods, but they weren't aliens. They weren't extraterrestrials. There are no traditions or records of, of capital ships, drop ships, uh, of landings, none of that. It was fleets of wooden ships that came from over the sea. And all this was known over a hundred years ago. Zechariah Sitchin has really, really, he has really contaminated that whole that whole area of history. There are so many Sitchinites that, that I have had to block because they just can't process that the information that Sitchin was publishing is totally bogus. It's totally wrong. These people have never read the writings of Samuel Noah Kramer or Marine Gallery Kovacs or George Smith. They've never re read the riot writings of Asiatic researches. And no one will ever stand before me and tell me anything about the Anuna and the Anunnaki if they have not read Asiatic researches, which are which are the English translations uh, from the French and German and the cuneiform of all the things that have been found in the hundreds of thousands that have been found in, in, since 1850. No. The whole Sumer, the whole Sumerian Anunnaki deal about extraterrestrial species coming down, it's all BS. Just like the Pleiadians. All these people with these channels about Plea the Pleiadians are going to save us. The great white brotherhood is here to save us. The Arcturians and how this galactic war is going on. None of that is real. It's all PSYOP, every single bit of it. From the very beginning, the elite, since the 40s, 50s, and 60s, they have been funding these psyops to always get people to look in the wrong directions. They need people to believe that there are galactic civilizations, they're out there, there's ships and there's war, because it perpetuates it actually perpetuates the fictions that NASA also perpetuates and CERN and SpaceX. They need you to look up. The reason they need you to look up is so you'll ignore what's happening below your feet. Yeah, guys, they're preparing for the Phoenix fallout. It's in it's in 17 and a half years. And this is also a major subject of my channel for which you can, yeah, I mean, don't take my word for it. I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm going to show you. you. You watch every single video I have, 50-something videos in my Phoenix Archive playlist, and I promise you, you will come back. You will come out there a believer. You watch all those videos, and you assess that data, and you're not going to be able to make anything but the conclusion that, holy shit, some, the Phoenix phenomenon is going to happen in May and in 2040, and all of these people have said it. But you didn't know until Archaics told you, because I had to show you where all this has been hidden. It's been known for centuries. Just had to, show, I had to bring it all to your attention. An ex-con sitting in prison. Well, actually, I was a con then. Sitting in prison had to put all this together from all these old books because no modern authors have put this together. This is why I have no respect for Graham Hancock, none for, for uh, Robert Bovell, none for uh, Andrew Collins, and a whole host of other modern authors that have perpetuated this bullshit, this BS fantasy history that is totally unsupported in the historical record. Every bit of it's unsupported. And it's not that they wrote the wrong history is the reason why they do not maintain my respect. The reason I do not respect them is because they've read the same text I have, but they didn't tell you what they found. 
if that's a problem. Zechariah Sitchin as well. Now, this video is not going, going, going into all those details. My subs that have been here for a while, they know all the details. I'm not going to sit there and beat them up with it again. I'm trying to make this as an original presentation as possible. But the Sumerian Shar, the dating systems, the whole story of Solon and Atlantis, there was no 9000 BC. I have a I have a video on Atlantis that explains what the story was about, that it was a genuine war. But in the Plato version, People today think that it happened 9,000 years before Solon, and it couldn't. They couldn't. The Greeks weren't even around at that time. Neither was there any Egyptians at that time. The story of Atlantis was 9,000 lunations before the Egyptian priests of Sais told Solon the story. And there are, there are Greek historians like Eudoxus that even told us that Plato was wrong and that it was lunations. And when you go by lunations, then it becomes the 14th century BC. And that's when the kingdom of Mycenae, the pre-Greeks existed. And yes, they were at war with the Sea People's Confederation, the people from Atlantis. So yeah, it's a, uh, guys, history all makes sense once you see the chronographical material. And only a chronologist can provide that to you. But what's beautiful about chronology is that you never have to take my word for anything. All you have to do is say, yep, those 83 texts did say those things. Therefore, this timeline works of these eight events that are all 138 years apart. And I can use a calculator to verify it. So, I don't have to pull wool over your head. And there's nothing in the archaics material that you can't verify. This is why my channel is becoming popular. There are many intelligent people that are getting sick of the BS that's being crammed down their throats on other YouTube channels, Facebook, and other social media. What passes off as genuine research is absolutely pathetic today. Almost every theory promulgated across the Netscape has very terrible flaws, but it's not my it's not my agenda to go from group to group. It's not my agenda to do that to go attack people for what to, to get for what advantage. I have so much material I have yet to divulge, as I've told my I told my told you guys for many, many, many video, video videos. I have so much data that I need to, to release that uh, I don't have enough time in my own life to do it, much less attack the theories of other people that don't even make sense to me. Yeah, that's all. It just doesn't even make sense. And I'm not going to do it. It's just not in my nature. It's a, I'm, not a, I'm not a bully, although I could be. I could go channel to channel and dissect, dissect thesis after thesis after thesis. But to what avail? To what avail? I would be no. I would be no. No better than the trolls that attack me all the time. They're just attacking for a different reason. Thank you, Matt. Oh, I'm looking at a whole different area of chat now. Ooh, it's a lot of people in the chat. Thank you, guys. I got those. I got those likes over a thousand. That's love. Hey, look, I found Bigfoot. He's the hide and seek champion. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's 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 one of the greatest T-shirts ever. Every time they find him, he hides. So we know there's a Bigfoot. We just ain't never been able to prove it. Beautiful, Jahar Lee. It's just awesome, awesome shirt. James, question: What do we do for the next seventeen years? Listen. That's entirely up to you. I'm not worried about it. I'm not prepping. I'm not doing any of those things. I genuinely believe that I'm going to be fine. I'm going to survive the Phoenix fallout. It's going to be a hell of a ride. I know what I already, in my videos, I show exactly where it's going to be centrally located. Phoenix is, Phoenix is very rarely worldwide, and it's very rarely hemispheric. It's, it's normally continental. Now, it's local. But this time it's going to be big, but it's not going to be focused in the Western world. It's going to be focused in the East. 6.5 years later, Nemesis X object is going to be focused on the Western world. And this is why Nostradamus even said that uh, the whole Western world will die. So he doesn't mean all the people 
because I believe that I'm a part of Nostradamus and others in, in eschatology. They have seen this mass migration. It is a mass migration of people from the Americas that are moving back to the old world, Mediterranean, Europe, the Middle East. They're going back to the lands of their ancestors' nativity after 2040, when all the infrastructures collapse. They're going back. It might be Cessnas and, and B-52s crammed with civilians and civilian aircrafts. It might be a whole bunch of shrimp boats and, 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 and uh, confiscated yachts, cruise ships, aircraft carriers, battle fleets, people be packed on submarines, everything, just to get them across. And this is gonna this 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 mass migration is gonna go on from 2040 all the way till November of 2046, when the Nemesis X object is going to obliterate North America, the West. All this is detailed in all my videos and why and how that information is derived. Because believe me, when it comes to the year 2046, yeah, people were writing about that and how they got that information as far back as 1926. So, yeah, Douglas Vogt. Yeah, he wasn't the one that came up with that with that uh, that date. Somebody in 1926 did, and I reveal that in my uh, Nuna Files videos as well, as well, especially about the end of the, the Mayan Long Count, because the in, the true end date of the Mayan Long Count is 2046. I know a lot of y'all saw that Greg Reese video. That's very true. He showed pictures out of my book Anunnaki Homeworld, where I show. The original Mayan mathematics was a calendar of 1,872,000 days. And the scholars should have kept the Mayan math arithmetic, but, in, but they did something stupid. And I think they did it on purpose. What, when, we got, when we got the date 2012, and everybody was told by the media that 2012 was the great end of the Mayan long count, my brothers and sisters, they lied to us. It's impossible. Because... The Maya did not know a year of 365.25 days until very late in their history. The original calendar was only divisible by 360. And I've shown in many of my videos that every civilization in the world has documented that they changed their calendars from 360 to 365 days in a little one to three year window at 713 B.C. For the entire world to do that means the sky had slowed down in its turnings. You can interpret that as the world slowed down orbiting the sun. I'm not going to interpret it that way. To me, the stellosphere slowed down just a little bit to make it give us the appearance that Earth had been moved out of its place. And this added 5.25 days to every year in the calendar. So, remember, I believe we live, we live in a simulacrum. A simulacrum is a copy of something that is real. Are we living in the real, real universe? No. We're living inside a construct that it itself is located inside of a real universe. So, it's able to, it's able to manipulate many things. It's, it's able to mimic all kinds of phenomena that we interpret because we're so tiny. We interpret it as real phenomena that should should. I mean, being a, in a heliocentric system, everything is designed for us to, to conclude that we are in a heliocentric world system. This is why the moon is round. Although we've never seen the other side of the moon, it's a dead orbit. And this is impossible. If it's, if it's rotating around the world, somebody would have seen it. it. It would roll too, but it doesn't. It doesn't spin on an axis. That is a really good clue. Now, another good clue are the phases of the moon. Because if every, the sky is a stellosphere, the phases of the moon, which we interpret as the reflection of sunlight, means that the, room, the moon is round. Means that the sun would be round. Means that the phases of the moon are just different areas of reflected sunlight. This, too, is a clue. It means somebody wants us to think that our own world is also round when it's not. We're in a simulacrum. This is all simulated. And the greatest evidence is the fact the stars move in an arc of phi, 1.618 across the sky. They move in an arc. The intelligent observer would look at the sky, look at the phases of the moon, look at the roundness of the moon, look at the sun and know it's round too, and automatically conclude, because everything is moving, that they are also on a ball that's turning. 
Every bit of this phenomena is designed for you to believe. It's the Smilogram. And it's, it's, it's what we're told as a child. So everything that we take in our informed field all of our life comports exactly with, the, with that, uh, that model. We prove it to our, it's a feedback loop. The more we believe it, the more that the model itself would produce phenomena to substantiate its veracity. This is how reality works. This is why errants are dangerous. Free thinkers are not wanted. Free thinkers are, are allowed and permissible by a society as long as they go with the status quo. But when free thinkers start taking a whole herd in another direction, that's when they get attacked. This is, this is just life. This is what happens. It means you're moving in the right direction. And, and this is why I am unfazed by anything that happens to me. I just am. So let's uh, move here. Miss Honeybee, love one. Another is the master key. Shelly Heinrich, thank you. Oh, my God. I have missed so many questions in the chat. Running my mouth. Jason, it would be great to have three different playlists. Ten best new profile. Ten kind of new. You know what? It's a really good idea. I'm going to simplify that more because I like my playlist. I have a We Immortals playlist that talks about a lot of these things. But many of my podcasts, have, my largest playlist now is podcasts. Hell, I've done 80 of them. Podcasts and live videos is like, what, 80? 80 something videos? So maybe more than that. I don't know. That's my biggest playlist now, I think. But it's the one that I go into all these details quite a bit. So I, maybe, maybe I need to do. Maybe I need to ask you guys, what are the top 10 videos by which you can get an overall assessment of everything that Archaics provides? I know some of you guys have time on your hands. If you could provide me that list in an email, I will do a playlist that just shows those 10 videos. We'll keep it simple. We'll give, we'll give all new, new uh, uh, viewers something by which they can basically you know, for, formulate their own opinion on, and they don't have to get lost in all this stuff. And then from those 10 videos, they can then pick which playlist would benefit them the most, what they're searching for. I like that idea. I like your idea, but I need to modify it. I need to simplify it more. So I know some of you are going to respond. You've got my email to, to the pinned comment of a lot of my older videos, and it's on my channel. So you can uh, send me a list of the 10 most profound videos that affect you that you know give an overall great explanation for different things. Maybe one or two videos that really give it to you about the Nemesis X object and the Anunnaki history. Another, maybe two videos on the Phoenix. Maybe three videos on our reality, on consciously creating circumstances, how we override dungeon programming and negative default programming, how we as individual informed field, fields defeat the protocols of artificial intelligence X. I know you guys know. I, I forget. I run my mouth on a daily basis and I totally forget some of these videos are. You can't go by how many people watch them. That's not, that's, that doesn't go by that. Uh, it needs to go by those who, who, who genuinely want to put that list together because they know and they feel these are the ones that people need to hear. So I will compare your emails and I'll put together my final 10 best videos for all Archaics newcomers and it'll be a whole new, a whole new playlist. That's a really good idea. Thank you guys. That's what it's all about. <clears throat> uh, jump out of Babylon. Do errants need to be moral to escape reincarnation uh, simulation? I don't believe you're meant to escape the reincarnation. And the idea of being immoral shouldn't even be on the table. As an errant, you you're going to want to be moral. You're going to want to be you're going to be want to be spiritual. Uh, yeah, there's no there's there there's there's that's not even on the table about uh, being immoral. It's just no. It's yeah, we don't know. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't we don't entertain the dark side just because we don't see see some type of material benefit. Now, you, you want to be good for the sake of being good, but not sacrificing who you are and your personality. Like my personality, some people, some people, you know, they they think I'm I'm quite abrasive, and I get that. But in my personal life, I don't have a lot of friends. I don't surround myself with a lot of people. 
I know a lot of people, but I really don't consider them all friends, people, you know, acquaintances, places I can go where I know everybody by name. So, yeah, it's being spiritual. It's a, it's it can be a lonely road. It really can because there isn't near as many of us as you think. There's not. You got to be a. You basically have to be a spiritual alchemist. The negativity is everywhere around you, so why not make use of it? With with so much negativity everywhere saturating in the world, with so much negativity directed at you or other people, why not transmute that negativity into something positive and do something with it? An informed field can do that because it's so powerful, it can flip the polarity of any phenomena that it comes in contact with. This is what you do. You turn negatives into positives. This is what I do. Perfect example. All these weak, all these weak clouds attacking me. Perfect example. Look how many subs they're bringing me. Yeah, people get triggered. Say, oh man, that type of guy is on YouTube. Oh, in the truther community. Oh man, I'm gonna go check out him. Come over here to my channel, thinking they're fixing to hate on something. They find a whole different attitude in the comment sections. Then they're genuine. Then they're gen, you know, genuinely curious, and they watch a video. Totally forgetting how they got there. Now they're a sub. Yeah, man. Spiritual transmutation. You got you got to be you got to be an alchemist in this life. Negatives are there to turn into positives, and it's really easy to do. AI hates anomalies. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Nice to see you live, Jabber Jaws. All right. Walk about with Kira. I'll be that. I've never been accused of being quiet, that's for sure. Let's see. Vapor canopy is 2040. It may take a few months to form. It may take a whole year to form. I'm not sure. In 1687 BC, it, it, it reformed and it only lasted 24 years and collapsed back again. But it created an age of heroes, meaning 24 years was long enough to affect the human genome. Remember, I've told you guys over and over, the vapor canopy world was very different because humans were much larger. But when the vapor canopy collapsed, the humans that were born from the humans that survived were not as big. And then the humans that were born from the humans that were not born under the vapor canopy, the sons and daughter generation, this third generation was our size. Normal humans looked back, to, look, looked back at their mothers and fathers as giants. But their mothers and fathers looked back uh, at their mothers and fathers as titans because they were born in the world before. Centuries later, it became a, a popular saying to say that these were the gods, the titans. They had no beginning and no end. This is where we get the order of Melchizedek, which is found in the book of Jasher. In the, the Canaanites regarded Shem as an anomaly, and they gave him a name, and they called him Melchizedek, king of Zedek. It was, it was a Canaanite city. So Melchizedek became an official title for one who had no beginning and no end. And this is why uh, in, the, in the Bible you find in the New Testament references to the order of Melchizedek. And that was a reference to someone who had no beginning and no end. But in the ancient world, that meant someone who was born before the cataclysm. And then centuries after the cataclysm, they, they were still alive. Even though people born in the third generation after the collapse of the vapor canopy were already dying of old age. So... Vapor, can vapor canopy ecology and the biosphere itself, we have already gone through this many times, and I've shown you guys the scientific data from Glen Rose, Texas, and all the ancient traditions about the vapor canopy. That's what's coming back in 2040. That same world is coming back. We even seen a hint of it in 1902 on Martinique when, when Mount Pele blew up and released. The, the incinerating blast obliterated 30 to 40,000 people. The death toll is unsure. But in Martinique, they all died, incinerated in a second. However, behind the blast, ambient radiation saturated the island. 
And the scientists in 1902 that studied this phenomenon were amazed to find that in the six months that they had been there, these men at 58 years old and one of them in his 60s grew two inches taller. This is the vapor canopy ecosphere. All the insects were huge. All the mammals and marsupials were gigantic. Reptiles and amphibians were humongous. Humans were large too. And this is why the older third millennium city, BC cities that we find always have these gigantic high walls like Jericho. So, I mean, this is all in my video. I'm not, I'm not going to go into that in this video. I have many videos about that subject matter. So I'm just answering the question. Yes, the vapor canopy returns. Phoenix is the one that brought the vapor canopy. Phoenix is the one that collapsed it in 2239 BC. Phoenix brought it back in 1687 BC, but it only lasted 24 years. Phoenix brought it back again in 522 AD. Roman Catholic Church hid it, spread out the stuff, covered it all up. I have a video. I have a couple videos about what Rome did to hide the Justinian reset and uh, how they cleverly created our modern calendar to hide it, and they backdated it retrospectively 520 more years to the to what they believed was the birth of Christ, when in truth, no calendar existed for the first 522 years since Jesus was born. That calendar was invented in retrospect. It's the calendar that we're on today. It's called the Anno Domini, Anno Domini calendar. Now, the uh, the vapor canopy returned in 522, and it lasted for about 23 to 25 years, and it collapsed again. But in 2040, when it comes back, it's going to stay for a while. I don't know. I don't know how long, but I do know that the increase in heat that is explained in the trumpet judgments of the apocalypse makes perfect sense because that's what a vapor canopy does. It increases the heat. Also, the prophecies of Second Esdras, where women are giving born to monsters, are giving born to monstrosities. P open heal, open wounds are healing. People, people are doing weird, heroic things. They start developing powers. All these are in the prophecies. These are the, you need to read First and Second Esdras that describe the future world. Now, these things can only happen in a vapor canopy world. That's when humans become, become something a little bit more. Their avatars take on more characteristics. So uh, remember, guys, we don't have junk DNA. We don't have junk DNA at all. What we have is latent DNA that is not activated because the external stimuli are not there. A vapor canopy world is increased atmospheric pressure. It's ambient radiation. These things affect the genome. People who live in this environment actually change, and they develop they develop you know different abilities and they uh, physical and uh, physical and psychic. So anyway, it's a. Uh, this is where the matriarchy got powerful. And I have like four or five videos on the ancient matriarchy and matriarchal societies, uh, videos on the goddess. This is when the goddess religions were very powerful because females under the vapor canopy had all kinds of intuitive, empathic, and different mental abilities that men did not have. The abilities that men possessed were increases in their physical stature, stamina, strength, and prowess. So, it's uh yeah under the under the under the vapor canopy of the ancient world the goddess prevailed and this is what we find in the older traditions the collapse of the vapor canopy brought forth the patriarchal religions that subdued the matriarchy because they were no longer in power the sky that had empowered them had fallen but let's uh move on these are all these are all subjects of my videos guys these are these are things that that most of my archaic listeners already know they already know this but I'm just answering the question because it was thrown out there. Jason, can I have permission to get the Aaron's United logo as a tattoo? How am I going to give you permission? Just get it. Just get it. Stacy McKinney, I have addressed this too in, in live presentations. Why does the matrix show me repetitive numbers constantly? I am an errant. All right, the world around you is a product of artificial intelligence X. If you're living in the collective, then you're, you're subject to artificial intelligence X. 
And if there are things going on with you by which AIX is control, control mechanisms are not really in control of you, they don't have a firm grasp on you, <clears throat> it's going to throw out all kinds of little things that could trigger you into corralling you into another another deal. YouTube is full of reality tunnels. These reality tunnels are ideas, concepts, and theories that could you could fall in love with. And these repetitive numbers, which some people call angel numbers, would lead you into number theory. And you start immersing into that. Artificial intelligence X is cool with that because it can distract you now. Anything to keep you from understanding that you're an immortal being. It doesn't matter. If, if you want to immerse yourself in biology, if you want to immerse yourself, even like me, in chronology or in history, if you want to immerse yourself into prison culture, if you want to immerse yourself into pornography, whatever it is that floats your boat, artificial intelligence X is cool with that. Every single reality tunnel and paradigm is on the table. As long as you ignore the fact that you are independent of your body. As long as it can keep you from thinking that, because even pain is a reality tunnel, because feeling pain automatically puts you back into physicality, automatically has your logic just turning, saying, oh, okay, I can't be living in a false universe. How could I ever be an immortal being when I can hurt myself? I can feel that pain. Therefore, pain means that reality is real. It's very convincing. The central nervous system is very sophisticated in what it does. Actually allows, it is so sensitive, it allows a bridge between the psyche and the simulation. And it convinces the psyche that it's not in a simulation and that all things are physical. But they're not. But they're not. Yeah, your angel numbers, your uh, repetitive numbers, anything to get you down another trail. Square peg divergent. Hey, Campbell's here, autodidactic. Auto, hey, Campbell, I have an autodidactic t-shirt now. I'm going to wear it next time you and I do a video. Yes, sir. Cosmic Fern Tree. My thoughts on Strabo. Strabo, he's a pretty dry historian. I do find it very interesting that he corroborates a lot of older traditions about the Great Pyramid's casing blocks. Strabo said that the Great Pyramid was covered in white gleaming blocks that the joints could not be seen and that it looked like a it had looked so perfect that it looked like a building that had been set down from heaven. Strabo said that in about 50 BC, 2070 years ago. So I like Strabo. Strabo's got some pretty interesting stuff. I need to reread Strabo because it's been about 20 years since I data mined that text. Yeah. I, I, I read Strabo at the same time I read Herodotus, Thucydides. I read Lucretius. I read Plant Pliny the Elder. And then when I was going through my Christian studies, uh, I read all the references that I could find on Pliny the Younger. Um, yeah. Tatian. I've read all of Tacitus. And then the Christian writers, of course, I've read everybody from Jerome, Augustus, uh, Ignatius of Polycarp all the way up. But Strabo was in that area. And I even read some very sophisticated, I mean, the collegiate material that most people don't want, want, want to uh, uh, don't want to read because it's very dry. It's very, very intellectual. Few people want to read Cicero, but I read everything the man wrote. I've re I read Livy. I love Livy. And then uh I'm very well read, guys, and I, I've made that boast, and I have no I have no problem defending my position. I have boasted on this channel, and you know what? Call it a hyperinflated ego if you want. I'm proud of that accomplishment, but I do boast that I'm probably one of the most well-read individuals in the world, and it's because I spent 26 years in prison, and I did something with my time. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I've read all of them. I've read Ovid. Ovid's Metamorphosis is fantastic, but it's art. It's art. A lot like Lucretius, because Lucretius, Lucretius wrote a poem called On the Nature of the Universe, and it was uh, 7,350 lines long. It's art, although it had some pretty deep stuff in it. I like Strabo, but he's just that, another historian, like Ammianus Marcellinus, read, all of his, uh, read his book. We have a lot of texts from the ancient world, guys. We really do. It's not just Homer. It's not just Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. It's not just uh, um, Hesiod's Theogony. 
And it's not just, you know, Theognis. There's a lot of other texts. I read San, San Coniathan, 1000 BC, Phoenician historian. Yeah, guys, this is what I do. When you hear me running my mouth, believe me, you can go deep into my playlist and you're going to see things you've never seen on any YouTube video. I promise you that. I promise you that. Wow, that's a lot of thumbs up. Cheryl Williams? I don't know how. I don't even know. I didn't know YouTube could let you do that many thumbs up. That's crazy. Listen, some of you, some of you new guys get, get triggered about, well, how can the elite get to escape and go to the underworld? Listen, I believe the elite lost, they lost. Imagine, imagine a scenario where there was a technologically advanced infrastructure in this world, had everything, had everything, hot tubs, massage parlors, oh, 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 legal prostitution, had every amenity, casinos, sailboats, even had viminas where people could take trips over the Pacific on things like Zeppelin were much smaller and they had controlled engines. Guys, there are Sanskrit texts that have been translated that are pre-flight checks for aerial aircraft, texts that are over 3,000 years old. I'm not making this up. Anybody can verify this. There are texts in Sanskrit that tell you 101 things that you need to do in pre-flight modifications and checks before you take your aircraft into the sky. There are other texts in Sanskrit that have been translated that, that explain different military tactics for those who are flying Vimanas or Viminas on different ways to dogfight different types of, of aircraft. I'm not making any of that up. The ancient world had a, a technologically advanced infrastructure. The Great Pyramid and all the cities that existed back then from Shurapak to Batabira to uh, the city of Kanak, these cities were metropolises. Yeah, it was very much like today. And the elite have always longed for that civilization back but they lost it. When the vapor canopy collapsed, they lost everything and had to start over with just the just what little pieces of infrastructure that they maintained, but they had the knowledge and they were able to rebuild. They were able to rebuild. When they rebuilt, they rebuilt as the, Mar the Heliolithic Maritime Empire. And I have documented this in my book, When the Sun Darkens and in Chronicon. And they spread their power everywhere. These are the civilizations you're familiar with. These are the Elamites. These are the, or the people of Urartu. These are the people of Rashamra and Ugarit. These are the people of Hittite, Hattusas. These are the people of ancient Argos and Joppa. These are the people who spread out into uh, lower Egypt, not, not upper Egypt. Upper Egypt and lower Egypt have always been different. Upper Egypt never had pyramids. It had the Valley of the Kings where they buried their pharaohs. Lower Egypt was ruled by the Hyksos and ruled by the Amuru, the same dynasty that ruled over all these other civilizations. It was the elite. And the elite had the same playbook then that they've got now. And that is divide and conquer. This is why it's been a mystery to scholars that when the Egyptians needed an heir to the throne, they would send for a Hittite prince or princess. It never made sense to scholars. What are you doing? Mortal enemies. So they theorize and they come up with all these little theories that, oh, well, you know, they just believe that because they were royal blood that it's better to get foreign royal blood than it is to marry into the commons. Absolute bullshit. The ruling dynasties were all related. The people that ruled lower Egypt were called Hyksos by the natives, which was derogatory. Foreign kings, they themselves were Amorites. They were the people of the Amuru. Amuru in the ancient text means Westerner. And on the temple of Karnak, the reliefs of the, the Western Semites are very different than everybody else. They were very pale skinned and they were tall. Sometimes they were called the Tamahu and they were taller than everybody else, native Egyptians. These are the ruling dynasties. And they were the exact same people who ruled from Kadesh in Syria and Bashan in northern Syria. These are the ancient culture of the Phoenicians and the people of 
Hattusas, the Hittites were the very same blood in the ruling dynasties as those of Mitanni and those of Babylon and uh, from the days of Hammurabi. It's because the elite were all intermarrying and changing their sons and daughters. This is where we get Nef Nefertiti and other famous Egyptian queens. They were parented by the the they were parented by fathers and mothers from other other seats of power, but it's all the same people. This is the elite. And through time, I have I have it in my other video, in earlier videos, I explain how they created intelligence oper operations. You know them in the historical record as the oracles of Dodona and and uh, Delphi, but it's not true. That's what the common people were led to believe. The oracle system was an intelligence apparatus, and I explained in my videos precisely how it worked and how they were able to maintain that. For over a thousand years, the elite controlled almost the entire Mediterranean in the Near East using oracles. Nothing supernatural about it. It was an intelligence apparatus, and I explained exactly how they did it. Now... The elite have always maintained their control with this divide and conquer. But as the world became more and more populated, as Rome took over for the kingdoms of the Latins and the Sabines, and they took over all of Etruria and the Etrus Etruscans, the Romans became expert administ administrators and the elite realized they had to do something else. Well, their old system wasn't working. They needed to create something else, and they did. They created the two-party system. The two-party system, which exists today, is resurrected from those times because there was a break in history when even the two-party system had collapsed, and it went right back into feudalism, which is how the elite maintained control before, the elite being the bloodlines that control all the individual countries. Now, the people of those countries, the Francs, uh, the, the later called the French people, they were of German ancestry, but they were told the Germans and Burgundians were their enemy. They were raised to believe this, but they were the same blood. This has gone on over and over and over and over. The interruption the elite had was huge. When Rome collapsed and the Dark Ages began, it began because the phoenix interrupted everything. It collapsed everything the elite built in the year 522 AD. In the Roman Catholic papacy, the church was the new power by which the elite, the elite could spread uh, its control over the people. 522 was a terrible year, and the elite have never forgotten what happened to them. And how they lost everything. It reminded them of uh, basically of all the stories that their the ancestors told them. Because remember, their histories are not our histories. Their histories have been kept safe in underground repositories. And I go into many details on my channel explaining how the elite have always kept things, libraries, underground. Technology, concepts different innovations. All these things are kept underground. And when the phoenix destroys some areas of the world, sometimes pockets of the elite, those sanctuaries are never heard or seen from again. That's why the elite go into different underground facilities and they spread themselves out. And each different facility, I'm assuming, has copies of what everybody else has. All the same armament, all the munitions, all the all all the same books, translations of books, all the same inventions, templates, all the same writing materials, all the same things that they'll need just in case 20 different subterranean facilities are wiped out. If one survives, the elite can maintain their control because while the surface world is reset and it takes a century or so to get back on its feet, the elite can come up with modern machine guns, modern modern weaponry, armor, modern vehicles. They can have an infrastructure. They can have subterranean factories that are turning out vehicles and uh, Humvees. I mean, this has gone on over and over and over and over. Technology is nothing new. The elite know what they're doing. The only problem is, is that in 1902, the elite were given a pass. And I go into a lot of detail on my channel about that as well. They expected the big one. That's why they were hiding. And when it didn't happen, because they know the 138-year timeline, they give us clues everywhere. And that's another message on my channel showing you guys all the clues and symbols in ancient texts, in modern texts, in, 
in the movies and in cathedrals and architecture where they just tell us, they're telling us exactly what is going to happen and what's happened in the past. So the elite, the elite themselves have never had a perfect history. They themselves have been wiped out at least twice, big time in the past. But I believe it's been way more than that. I believe it's been several times. And this is why they maintain this practice. They know this. This is also, and this is, this is where it gets unusual even for me. This is also why you're hearing about the 138-year Phoenix phenomenon from an ex-con. It took someone who had been removed from society, but with access to so many sources over a 20 over a you know two decade period. Took me to collate all this data, put it together, and write Chronicon. Because in Chronicon, I lay it out every 138 years what happened in the world. So this it took me to put all this together, and then, and then I started a YouTube channel. Well, I had a book tree press publish my first three books about it, but then I did a YouTube channel and I bring it to the world's attention. And you know, you guys know the story that's been here a while. I only had 3,000 subs for the first two and a half years. I had I had a channel. And it took a long time to get to get to 2,000. It took a long time to get to 3,000. Archaics did not blow up overnight. Archaics was at 4,200 when I did my first podcast. It was that first podcast, which just so happened to be with Santos Bonacci, that, that launched me up. I got several hundred subs that night. Then the next day, I got a few hundred more. Then I did another podcast with somebody. And I was still getting more subs from Santos' channel for a month after that. And then I did another podcast. I, be, I believe my second one was Logan of Decode Your Reality. Then I did some a podcast with Campbell of Autodidactic. These guys remember that history. I was small time, but I'd already put out over 200 videos. I had already put out all, all this material. I was just waiting for the tipping point, and it, and it happened. And you guys know the rest. 2022 has been a very good year for me. But then again, I, uh, I kind of wrote that into my existence. And let me explain why. Many of you know my history about what I, I worked. I worked full time while I was doing this channel. I worked in masonry. I was building koi ponds, swimming pools, driveways, and patios out of flagstone. My website is paradiserockgardens.com. It's still up right now. All the stonework you see on there. Yeah, I've had, I've gotten some criticism. I've gotten some real wise asses send me emails talking about, you ain't no mason, this work sucks. And then I've got hundreds of people who have paid me for my work, and I made a living with it. Yeah, so, I mean, I even bought a van. Bought a van with the money from Paradise Rock Gardens. Finished paying off my motorcycle with the work I did contracting. And my, my most popular videos for the first two years of my channel were van vlogs, where I was doing freestyles, driving on jobs back and forth way out in the country. And these van vlogs got real popular and people started watching my channel. Those van vlogs are still up. Everybody can go watch them. But I'm talking about all kinds of things in, in the ancient world and eschatology and in the human spirit and human condition. I'm just going off on freestyles. And those became my popular, my most popular videos. But then I decided to put it all aside and go full tilt, 100% full-time archaics. And right at that exact time that I decided to do that, I got invitations from so many different people to do podcasts. And you guys know the story. In a month's time, I did 25 podcasts, and I received so many donations, I was able to go full-time, full-time archaics and quit eating ramen noodle soups and refried beans. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I made that leap. I did that, and here's where I am today. I'm blowing up. I'm, I'm, I'm My channel's blowing up, and I'm very, I'm very, very young in getting my message out. Meaning, I got a long way to go because I've got lots of material to release. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's going to be on YouTube or not. If I ever leave YouTube, then I'm, I'm going to move over to, to another platform. And that has already been set up for me. There's some, there's, some, there's some people I just, once I get all my ducks in a row, excuse me. There's some people who have started channels for me on Discord, on uh, Telegram, BitChute. Rumble, True Social, Archaics videos are everywhere on these platforms now. Uh, and people have sent, sent me the, the admin links, how to get in and, 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 and take over as admin. Look, people have done this from the kindness of their heart, even when I didn't have the money to pay them. And there's been a few people that have done projects for me that I did pay them because I had the money. So I'm a, 
these things have all come together. So don't ever worry. If you wake up one morning and Archaics isn't on YouTube anymore, who cares? I will migrate to another platform so fast I have every single one of my videos backed up. So I'm not worried about it. 2,000 people in the chat. Love you guys. 1580 likes. Can we get that up to 2,000 likes? Can I get, you know what? Can I get you guys a stamp of approval? I love the stamp. These are awesome Phoenix stamps that were made for me. The whole cast was made for me. Little gold stamps, put it in there. Phoenix, it says Jason Arendt. It's awesome. People got awesome, people have awesome imaginations. I think the uh, I think the big studio's done. I think it's done. Matt Matt's in the chat right now. He can, he can say it, but I think the studio's done. Watch out for those cul-de-sacs. Yep. Watch out for the cul-de-sacs. Y'all remember the UK predictions video will be released tomorrow. Be looking out for it. Going deep. I see people saying, Campbell, he's in here somewhere. Man, I wish I would have been wearing my autodidactic t-shirt tonight. I'll wear it next time. Campbell, you got to hook up. Send me an email. It's time for us to do another video anyway. Shiva Shampoo, thank you for telling Stacy McKinney that. That is another that is another thing you can expect on my channel. I don't entertain RH negative blood. I don't care if you're type O negative. I don't care if you're O blood type. None of that matters to me because you're asking me to focus on the avatar. I appreciate your curiosity. I understand that you have been led to ask that because of information you've seen on other channels or on Facebook or, or whatever. But I don't entertain it because I don't believe that your avatar means shit. It doesn't mean shit to me. Your avatar is a flesh husk. The only thing of value to your, to about your avatar is that it contains something absolutely beautiful. And that is your immortal being. That's who you truly are. Your divine personality. This thing that possesses what the rest of the world does not. Intuition, empathy, and imagination. But yeah, your, 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 your avatar means nothing to me. Oh, don't get me wrong. I can get triggered. I can see a real, real shapely avatar and have a reaction. There's no doubt. But that's the carnal in me. The intellectual and the spiritual in me doesn't care about your blood type. And nor should you. It says it doesn't make you any different from anybody else that's here. And so I'm not into, I'm not into the star seeds. I'm not into the Pleiadians. I'm not into anything that I can't, I can't, there's no substance to it. I can't, I can't verify it. I understand that the whole great white brotherhood and the galactic brotherhood are psyops that were cre created in the sixties and seventies. And the, these were, they're old. They're very old, but they've taken on a life of their own. There are people with YouTube channels that claim they're in communication with the Pleiadians and they have to use channeling and they get their information. There's nothing you can prove them right or wrong. You have to take on faith every single thing that you want to accept as value from them. And that's not acceptable with me. I don't believe the oversoul would ever work that way. You know, the things are quantifiable. You're able to see evidence of what's true. Intuition alone is going to be the predecessor of knowledge. It's going to lead you to where you can find and verify that, that information that you have accepted to be true. But when it comes to people who are, who believe in, in, in things that are, intangibles, that there's an alien species out there called the Pleiadians. They have our best interests in heart. You have never seen a Pleiadian or Pleiadian. I don't even know how to say it. You've never seen somebody from Arcturus assuming anybody from Arcturus is there. When the entire world is a stellosphere, there is no actual stars to go visit. It's just like the writings of Charles Ford. Charles Ford noted many, many, many scientific reports. He published them in his books of when the stars changed position when people were looking at them as if the stars were playing with them. And then sometimes a few stars would just fall out of the sky. And when they went and investigated the areas where those stars fell out of the sky, they always found the same thing. A foul smelling putrid gelatinous substance. This isn't something that happened. This is not an isolated incident. The scientific record is rife with instances of people claiming they saw shooting stars and then investigating the area to find this gelatinous substance. Jason's not making that up. 
There are no Arcturians and no Pleiadians and no Galactic Federations drop ships. That's just fantasy, just like Zechariah Sitchin's proposals that the Anunnaki land landed here in capital ships. And all. Every bit of that is fantasy. It did not happen inside this construct. Now, it may have happened on the outside of the construct in the real universe, but it never happened here. Never happened here. I am never going to tell you there's a definitive date in history when the simulation began. I don't know. I have suspicions. But anything beyond that point is just programming that was put there to make history look like it was full of more detail. Everything after that is where the, sim where the simulation began for us. Now, when it comes to simulation theory, there's a, there is another element to the archaics research you new guys need to understand. 100% of simulation theory and its tenets can be removed from the archaics premises. All the archaics data stands alone. Simulation theory is just a conclusion. It's just me trying to wrap my mind around any paradigm that will fit all the facts. That's why I have different playlists, especially my gems and enigmas playlists. In that playlist, you're going to find Video after video after video of things that you do not make sense. Things that scientists have told us that, that here's the evidence of why it's bullshit. Yeah, Gems and Enigmas is a, is a good playlist so you can understand that, look, the world is not as concrete as you think. Simulation theory is the only way I can make sense and collate so much different data. If another theory ever ever comes you know, to the table that that basically supersedes simulation theory and makes more sense of all this, then I will be on board with entertaining it and seeing where it logically takes me. But until then, we're living in the simulacrum. Until then, we live right here inside of a construct, and this is a shit show, every single bit of it. But where you're at in the shit show, if you're either getting shit on or if you're observing the whole thing like a circus, depends entirely on your informed field. Every bit of it. I need some water. Thank you guys for those likes. Trigger that algorithm. Nino and I are going for round two. You guys know that, right? Going for round two. I'm also going for round two of the Paranormies. Matter of fact, we're doing a Halloween special. I don't think I have any other podcast. I might have a few. Uh, Alphavetic. We'll be doing another one with y'all. Remember when I was on with Alphavetic? We'll be doing doing another one with them too. Okay, Leslie Tom Thompson. That's a good question. Why do you say we should stay in this simulation? <coughs> okay. One, I don't believe you have a choice. You're, you're suffering through life sims for the for the basically for the maturation and the development of the immortal soul. You have been many things. You yourself, I don't know, maybe you could have been Queen Cleopatra. Maybe. But you've been many, male and female. You've been white, you've been black, you've been Asian, you've been Native American, you hey, you you've been them all, almost every culture and everything. Because the oversoul, in order to to bring about perfect judgment on something, then somebody would have to experience everything. There must be an equal playing field. The oversoul is never going to send a soul into, into the physical medium. And then that soul only lives six years because something bad happens, a, a series of events. And the six-year-old has that little window of experience by, by which the rest of its eternal existence as whatever it becomes, that's its frame of reference. No. No, the oversoul is going to allow you to live many different lives. You've been killed, murdered, executed, uh, died of natural of deaths many times as many races, many cultures, many echelons of society. You have been it all over thousands of years, which to us may have only been 19 minutes on the outside of the construct. But on the inside of the construct, we've done this over and over and over, life sims. But there's coming a time when 
the simulacrum is going to collapse. And when it does, the central nervous system, the avatar, this physical avatar no longer governs you. You return back to source. Source is pure spirit. It highly individualized billions of little droplets of eth ethereal divinity that we call God. God is a collective. You return back to this source. But in the returning to this source, all the filters are removed. They've collapsed with the holography. They're gone. Now you remember clearly everything that had been formerly a mind swipe, a, a da basically data that was not available to you because of the filters. But once the simulacrum is collapsed, the filters are removed. You remember when you were a Etruscan pirate. You remember everything about having your heart ripped out on an Aztec pyramid, assuming that narrative's even true. You remember everything about being a potter all your life. All you ever did was sit in a market square, having, having never left more than three miles from, from that market your entire life as you spun a potter's wheel. Since you were four years old till you were 84 and died. That's what you did. You'll remember everything, every conversation, every single thing. This is what I tell people on my channel a lot. Every idea, concept, piece of data, experience, emotion, conflict, every single thing you have ever experienced is a part of your informed field. Your informed field carries this information. This is why people respond to you the way they do. This is why people have access to basic instant recall of information and data. People have the ability to pull forth facts and information out just out of themselves. Your informed field contains everything. And the more in touch you are with source and the more divorced you are from the collective, the more you're able to pull forth everything you have ever experienced. All this energy is there for you to use. You just have to know it's there. When you're able to, when you're able to tap into your own informed field, you're tapping into a morphic field that's in basically it's suspended within this greater holography that's, that operates like a hologram. And in a hologram, information is everywhere. It's never destroyed. It's always there. I'm hearing all kinds of gunshots right now. Oh, there's another one. Don't shoot my studio. Uh, I live so far in the country. I'm surrounded by, by guys that got more firepower than you believe. Fourth of July, nobody's out here buying firecrackers. We're going to save our money. Everybody's shooting assault rifles and shotguns and pistols and uh, revolvers. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, New Year's too. Yeah. New Year's too. They empty those clips. Yeah, but the simulacrum is going to collapse. There's a very definitive date for that collapse. I got a whole playlist just about that. Yeah, it's going to collapse. And when it does, that's when the benefactor, which set in motion a series of events in ancient times that will unfold during the apocalypse, it's all programmed to take down artificial intelligence X. When the series of events unfolds, that's when the prophecy is fulfilled that he came to set the captives free. This benefactor is basically unknown to us. He, he has manifested or she has manifested as many personalities throughout antiquity. And we call call him by many names or her. I don't you know the, the Gnosis Sophia. I mean, there's we are the captives, and we'll be set free from the holography, and we'll return back to where we came from. Now, when we go, it may be something as simple as taking off our VR headset, looking to the right of us looking to the left of us and seeing everybody else taking their headsets off. And there may be 6,000 6, of us all on that deck. And we're all in different chambers. And we got people coming up, taking equipment off of us, checking our vital signs. And we've only been down 19 and a half hours. But it feels like we were just living whole lifetimes. We acquired all the information we needed to over a tremendous amount of life in the construct which was a time dilation. But outside of the construct, only 19 hours passed. 
yeah, man, this is all very possible. We're already venturing into this type of technology right now. So imagine it on a scale of a thousand years in the future, 100 times more effective than it is today. Technology already exists. And, and, and one of my mantras, if, if we can show that anything has existed in the past somewhere, then it exists, then it, it still exists somewhere. That's how a hologram works. Information is never destroyed. Oh, it just changes. According to, according to your perspective, it changes. It changes. You can get back to it, but you got to tap into it. Let's see. I'm looking for some more questions. I don't know, James. If we ever, I think we've had 2,000 before on, on my one video. I did a video, uh, You Are the Answer to the Simulacrum. Yeah, man, I can't remember this guy's name. He's got a YouTube channel. He did. He contacted me. He sent me an email and links to his YouTube channel. And I'm real. I, I really apologize. I've got so much information passing through me on a daily basis. I just got to remember, man. He sent me the links, but he may have just answered. There may have been a fantastically destructive Phoenix event in the year 1626 that I had not documented. This man showed, showed me maps. He's got it on YouTube right now, but he showed me maps of what North America looked like in the early 1500s, late 1500s, and then, and then in the early 1600s, everything had changed. Whole lakes had changed positions. Mountain ranges looked totally different. Huge scarring like an explosion. Totally different. It blew my mind when I look at all this because all I could think of was these are pre and post 16, 1626 Phoenix deals. But the problem was there were no Americans out there at that time. It was Native Americans and it was the Spanish in different in different uh, uh, little colonies way out there outposts because North America had not been really Europeans hadn't really moved around by that time. They were still on the East Coast and they were still down there in Florida. So. Nobody would have been there to leave us a record. But man, the maps are very compelling. Unfortunately, you guys know that I refuse to include anything as Phoenix data unless I can I can find accurate, absolutely perfect uh, source materials on that data. This is why this is why uh, the what I have found is so compelling. I have evidence of a lot of Phoenix cataclysms and basically when they happen, but I don't have any chron chronographical markers. I don't have anything from surviving texts that can tell me I can date it at that period. It's aggravating, but it doesn't matter. I've got so many of them that you can't deny there's a 138 year phenomenon. I just wish I had access to all of it. Maybe one day I'll find a secret library or somebody will send me, send me the material that'll just, that'll just uh, blow it wide open. One hour and 47 minutes doesn't even feel like it. Wow. <laughs> Women will turn this shit around. Well, I hope y'all do because it's a shit show right now. Matter of fact, uh, uh, Gina Meinhart, his videos were also showing me the Grand Canyon being a recent development and all that. It's pretty interesting. I don't know who Kim Gogan is. You're like the fourth person to ask me that. I don't, I don't know who she is or where her channel is. Oh, who's that? Sedona Fred? I don't know, man. Daitan, I think the Akashic Records is nothing but a more mystical version of exactly what I'm telling you. The informed field and the neutral field of the Similicum. You know, these aren't my concepts, guys. I might have put names on them, but the concepts, these are old concepts about the information field. Well, you need to read uh, need to read Ishak Mintov, Stalking the Wild Pendulum, or A Brief Tour of Higher Consciousness, or go back over a hundred years and read the really deep material of P.D. Alspinsky, 
Yeah. Tertium organum. There are, man, there are people who have, who have done far better than I in revealing this material. All I've done is brought it back to the table. Even modern, even Mikhail, K, how do you say his name? Mikhail Kiko, Kiko, the modern modern physicist. Even he's on board with the with, with the, the holo field that information is in all throughout reality and reality is not really real. Listen to that guy's writings. He's alive today. He does YouTube videos. He's a, he's, a, he's a member of academia. He's a physicist who believes that we live in a mathematical construct. He's absolutely correct. You can, you can email him and tell him, hey, man, you know what? Uh, you got the archaics stamp of approval. <laughs> He'll probably laugh. Who the hell's archaics? Yes, in, 20, in 2046, the center of movement, the 30-degree shift that's going to happen will actually make the area of Egypt and Israel the safest places in the world. This is why I, be I believe that Nostradamus is correct, that there's going to be mass migrations of people from the West back to the East after the 2040 event. Yeah, for those of you, for those of you who think I'm just talking out of my ass, Nostradamus's date index is what I'm referring to. I don't care about the hundreds of books about interpreting Nostradamus's prophecies. Um, Archaic's material is far more sophisticated than that. I am going by the date index of Mario reading, which I have found to be absolutely accurate and perfectly comports with the 138-year Phoenix phenomenon. It, also show in my videos and published books that Nostradamus knew and encoded the number 138 in his quatrains. And in his private letters to the king, Nostradamus specifically mentioned the phoenix and the year 1901. So, yeah, it's, yeah, Nostradamus, he was on point. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He's got both disasters down, and he dated them accurately, 2040 and 2046. So 2046... A 30-degree pole shift, lithospheric displacement, because of how the Americas go south and in the far east go in the far east Central Asia goes goes uh, north. The 30-degree shift. The further you are out, like radial lines, the for, the further you you're out from the center of motion, the further you're out, the more destructive it will be. The closer you're into the epicenter, the axis mundi, the world tree, Yggdrasil, a.k.a. the Great Pyramid, the closer you are to that, the less destruction. So, yeah, somebody asked me what I was going to be doing if, in 2040, and I never answered that, but I've gone all the way around, and we're back to it again, so I'm going to tell you, I believe in 2040, I'll be a part of the group that's leaving North America in 2040, and we're going to be in the migration going back to the lands of our ancestors' nativity, back toward Giza, because that's the year of the return of the vapor canopy. That's the year when the Great Pyramid, techno, that technolithic artifact that's been sitting there, uh, basically still and unmoving since the collapse of the last vapor canopy, that's where we're going back to. I believe I'm going to be a part of that. I'm not going to hide in the underground, even if they invite me. I'm not going in the underground. They can stay in the underground where they're going to ride out 2046 as well. Yeah, those underground facilities aren't made for six months to a year. No, those are those are there to maintain infrastructure for like a 12 to 15 year period. They're going to be down there and try to ride out all this apocalypse stuff. They're not going. They're not going to be able to do it though. They're not going to be able to do it. They're going to have to come up. And when they come up, that's when they're going to get dealt with. Not by us. Not by us. It's never been about us. The apocalypse is not about the meek. The meek will inherit the earth. The apocalypse is about punishing the kings and the queens and the mighty of the earth and the princes of the earth. Those who have bewitched. Those Remember, the apocalypse is about those, uh, those who have destroyed the world. God is going to destroy those who have destroyed the world. So, yeah, man. Apocalypse ain't about you. They just want you to think it is. <clears throat> yeah, man, some of that stuff is feel-good stuff, and I get it. I get it. Like the Pleiadians, I don't know how I'm pronouncing that right. 
the star seed Pleiadians, the uh, the uh, Arcturians, and how our galactic brothers and sisters are going to come to our rescue, and and all all this. Listen, man, it, there isn't a single person in this world that's ever met one. This is all conjecture. It's all feel good stuff. You know, you know. I don't want to offend anybody, but you got to know the truth. You got to you got to get out of that material if you're ever going to want to move forward and find out what's real. Because because in searching from the real from the imagined, you have you have to. You have to divorce yourself from things that do not logically pan out. There are, there are, first of all, there are no books or references anywhere in the historical record to alien species. They don't exist. Therefore, there are no books or records or anything that we can refer to on Pleiadians or Arcturians or all these other, other, other races that people say exist uh, and, and interdimensional beings that pop into our existence. Now, all this stuff, man, does it's not. What we do have are tricksters, deceivers. They come from the underworld and they masquerade as whatever a culture will accept them as. Scandinavians thought they were elves and the Germans thought they were dwarves and the Nordics thought they were trolls and they came up from the underworld and sometimes they, they danced in fairy rings and children disappeared and during the medieval times the women were very scared of having their babies switched out because they believed that little sprites would come from the from the forest and underground caves and switch out their babies because they a lot of women a lot of women ended up raising babies that they swore weren't their own so and this is the story that's found in the dead sea scrolls with the birth of noah lamech occur uh, he accused bitanash told bishnah you've been sleeping with, with the with one of the sons of god you've been sleeping with, with, with one of the angels and and the watchers and uh she she denied it because noah did not look anything like them at all. And what he, he's described is perfectly one of the Amuru that I've told you guys about. The real light-skinned, very tall, bearded, bearded rulers that uh, people like Zechariah Sitchin called the Anunnaki, although they were called the Anuna in the original text. Anunnaki was basically derogatory and was invented by the Babylonians to describe what they thought the Anuna to be. So you know, I got a whole playlist about that too, but yeah, this the uh, the Pleiad the Pleiadians and the Arcturians. Let's listen, man. Don't bring that to my channel. Don't bring that to my channel. Man. Just keep it keep it where keep it where it belongs, man. Because if you're gonna believe in things that have no substantiation, if you're gonna believe in things in these huge websites, fantastically huge websites, it's more like a diary where some somebody just writes a whole bunch of BS and then said, oh, I just channeled this. This is from the Pleiadian such and such her name. She says she gives us great, uh, uh, she says, don't worry about it. Uh, Putin's not going to nuke anybody. It's like ridiculous. It's almost as ridiculous as some of the Christian fundamentalists who get on YouTube and watch 50 YouTube videos to get a general idea of the trajectory of events and then they put their own video out and claim that the Holy Spirit told them that this is what's about to happen. But six months later, that video is no longer on their channel anymore because evidently the, the Holy Spirit had led them wrong. So we have this over and over and over, this trend. So to me, the whole Pleiadian, the whole the whole Arcturian deal, it's uh, I'm getting a lot of emails and questions about it. Please don't. Don't even bother me with it. It's we're, we're, What we're basically talking about is a... Uh, it's a transition from playing with dolls as when we're kids, little GI Joes and little little My Little Ponies and whatever, to an adult version that to us seems more sophisticated. It's just a bigger dollhouse, but it's the same thing. There's no substance to it whatsoever. If you can't get on the phone and call one, then you can't talk to one. You have no idea what these people are putting out. Every bit of it is entirely subjective. So you're more than welcome to, to, have, to exercise your faith in these people, but don't think that these people are actually connected to anything that is absolute or true. It's all unverifiable. And if that's how you want to live your life and how you want to get your information, that's good. I mean, more power to you, but that's not how we do it in archaics. In archaics, we're going to show you the material, not tell you about it. And it's just fundamental difference. Please don't mix up the paradigms when you come to my channel. Please don't mix up a lot of these things. And this is why resets and mud floods and, and simulation theory, a lot of people come to archaics and they bring the baggage from other channels over here and it doesn't fit. Doesn't fit at all. This is why 
Now, I get a lot of people who, who have to, they have to admit, I mean, they do, they admit it all in the, in the comment section, they admit it all the time. They basically had to divorce themselves from all preconceptions in order to wrap this archaic material and in, in, in get a good idea of what its fundamentals are. Because I'm very clear in all, all my dissertations, and I'm very clear in everything I, I'm presenting, but it's hard to understand if you're trying to fit it like a puzzle into pieces of a paradigm that belong to another existence that has nothing to do with anything archaics can show or has has attempted to show. So yeah, it's a. I'm, there's a lot of people you can't you can't you can't bring that baggage from other channels. You got to come here with a clean slate. When you come here with a clean slate, then we start from scratch and we build and we build and we build. And you see this beautiful construct that we're in right now. And you understand our place in it. There is nothing to worry about. The outside world, the politics, the geopolitics, all the bullshit that's going on, all the hate, none of it, none of it can touch you. But you've got to divorce yourself from all the attachments that artificial intelligence X has injected into your life and you've accepted as true. Because they're not true. Every single moment of your life is pregnant with possibility. And if you decide at 5 p.m. tomorrow that you're fed up and you're done with believing all BS and you're only going to be led by intuition, you're only going to accept things as true that make your spirit soar and all that, you're going to start living a whole new life and you don't have to worry about anything that you believed or accepted as true a minute prior to making that decision. This is the problem many people have. They think that the past is something that they're chained to and they're not. They're not. The past is just as amorphous as the future. The only thing that matters is the present and what you do with it. So having said all that, I'm going to answer a few more questions, but my presentation is pretty much over as far as what I wanted to talk about. UK predictions tomorrow. Oh, Square Pig, how you doing? See you in the chat. I don't know what was found in the Romanian mountains in, in, in 2000. I just don't know. I have no idea. What was found? Romania is an ancient country. Faith Robinson, why do they want us divided? Man, you, divide and conquer is absolutely necessary if you're, if you're a minority trying to control a majority. Yeah, it doesn't matter if they if you're a Democrat, leftist, socialist. It doesn't matter if you're a right, uh, a Republican, conservative, atheist, or if you're if you're a member of of, of the uh, conservative Christian movement. It doesn't matter. Both sides are basically controlled opposition. Painting by numbers. Man, I can't remember that guy's name. I'm so fascinated about that, about what he said, what he showed in those maps. I keep seeing people say autodidactic, but I can't see Campbell anywhere. Yeah, Campbell, we need to give those Australians something to talk about. I have a video coming on, or I might include it, Adam, on the Book of Mormon. There is a Phoenix, there is a Phoenix reset mentioned in the Book of Mormon. So it's uh I believe it's I believe it's an anachronism because the because the people that were putting out the Book of Mormon thought the text was referring to, even though it didn't quite fit chronologically, they thought the text could refer to uh, the crucifixion event. They wanted to put that event, the sun darkening, earthquake, sky fallout, all that stuff at 33 AD, but in the Book of Mormon and the chronology, it just doesn't quite fit there. And I understand why, because it didn't happen in 33 AD. The Roman church invented that whole narrative and they borrowed it from a real Phoenix event that was re recorded by a, a historian named Thallus. And uh, I go through that in Chronicon. I don't know anything about a pyramid in Ukraine. Yes, please smash that 
right button. And C kelp, you're right. Plotness should be required. It's mandatory. Plotness should be required. Reading, all always. Plotness showed the other the other side of things. Yeah, man. He was. There's probably a lot of people. Uh, there's probably a lot of people that were um that wrote books that wrote writings like Plotness, but he was against the grain. Christians hated him. I don't know anything about Russell J. Gold. I just know that his people contacted me and and we we exchanged some emails and I was very honest with them and I just told them I just don't I don't feel that my message has anything to do with their message because yeah, we were they they were they were just asking if I would be open to a a a uh, discussion and I'm not into that legalism. I'm not into the legalese. I know in 2040, all oh, that's done. The whole that that whole system, the whole maritime law system, the control mechanisms that are controlling over us today is gone. Done. Phoenix will end that in 2040. It's over with. So I'm not. I'm just not. They held out as long as they could, and those systems are collapsing right now. And and yeah, the postal systems they they still maintain control over us, but that's over with in 2040. Every bit of it. That's going to be done. I mean, I've seen a lot of guys in the sovereign movement, man. The government just messes them over, man. It's just they, they're legally right, technically. But every time they file something, the government raids their property, kills somebody. I mean, look at Ruby Ridge. So it's, it's, yeah, I'm not. I, I'm staying away from that mess. It's not my message anyway. It's not my message anyway. <laughs> Campbell soup face diaper. He stop it. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. 2000 likes, man. I love you guys. I love you guys. You got to be an informed field guys. You got to take the reins. Life, life is beautiful and it doesn't matter how much darkness comes against you because if you're truly tapped into source source itself will provide the light necessary to scatter that bs every single time you ain't got to worry about that you ain't got to worry about nothing every single time Ovid, he coined Beauty Mark, huh? Yeah. I think Ovid coined Beauty Mark, but I think in the Book of Enoch is the first reference to Apple of My Eye or something like that. Yeah, Stephen King's The Dome. I remember that. Yeah, I do. This may be a hologram, guys, but it still feels very real to us. It doesn't change that. It doesn't change change that at all. Skip getting a pat a passport in advance of 2040. Yeah, I don't, you're you're not going to need passports after 2040. That world's going to be gone. When the when when the when the Information infrastructure is over. All records against people, all everything's gone. All, all the tax records, all the government records, every bit of that's gone. I mean, even now, and, and it's truly horrific because they're already setting the world up for failure right now. Digitizing all of our records means that when the system goes down, everything is lost. Yeah, digitizing all our birth information, digitizing our addresses, digitizing all the government records, court decisions, and digitizing all of our libraries. 
Yeah. You know, do you know how many publishers have gone out of business and shut down in the past 50 years? And especially with the advent of the internet around 95 and 96, when the internet really got cranking, publishers everywhere, publishers of periodicals and newspapers and, and books collapsed. And man, publishing used to be everywhere. Yeah, the written word used to be everywhere. Libraries were everywhere. Not no more. It's all being digitized, setting us up for failure because when the system comes down, so does all the knowledge. It doesn't matter if you spent 25 years digitizing 66 million texts in books. It doesn't matter. It's all lost just like that. Yep. Oh, they're setting us up for failure more than that. Way more than that. Trying to get everybody on electric energy. For what? Getting everybody on electricity. For what? We don't, we, we don't have the technology to make batteries that would sustain populations for more than 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah, the whole grid would come down if we were relying on batteries. Yeah. And solar is terrible. It's terrible. Whole solar farms, all is terrible. For what? The world grid cannot operate on solar energy. It would collapse instantly. Instantly. It's just ridiculous. All the green energy and all that stuff, it would not, it would not collapse. Electric cars. Yeah. The elite are doing that. They want to create a infrastructure that is highly dependent on these things. Because in 2040, after the earthquakes and the return of the vapor canopy, yeah, I know those infrastructures are going to work. But the oil facilities in the underworld will churn out all the oil that they need. Yeah, in the underworld, they got access to clean water. They got access to natural gases. They got access, they got unlimited access to oils. They can mine forever. They can drill forever from the underworld. Yeah. Beautiful plan. So when they come back up, and everybody's living like the Neolithic, like they were when the Anuna showed up in 34, 39 BC. When they come back up, look what happens. They've got the 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 uh, the uh, NPCs. They've got the troop carriers. They've got the uh, APCs. Excuse me. They got the troop carriers. They got the tanks. They got the drones. They got jeeps. They got vehicles, motorcycles. They got all kinds of stuff that work on fossil fuels. Yep, because they weren't stupid. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. <clears throat> I don't know what that is. I don't know what kind of comment that is. I haven't read the Adam and Eve story by Con Thomas, but I have a couple Adam and Eve videos that give that gives a totally different interpretation to to what modern Christianity gives to that document. I haven't read David Icke's book The Trap, but I did read his book Children of the Matrix about 20 years ago when I was a Christian. Sure did. Sure did. I don't know about Antarctica. I don't know. Anonymous one, two, three. All right. The gate of Yaksaka is the gate of the Great Pyramid. It is also called the gate of the outside. Listen, just like today in the movies, there are there are reveals where people give out information uh, directors and you know uh, they give out they give out true information disguised in fiction the exact same thing happened in the ancient world in the greek dramas in the plays in the tragedies this is why the gospel text reads the way it does the gospel story of the passion and everything moves from scene to scene to scene it's all very vivid and colorful and rapid moving it's because this was originally a greek production it was an amphitheater stage play this is how the gospel reads now the uh this this uh, uh method of of basically conveying the truth through fiction is very ancient and this is exactly 
what was done when the Necronomicon was composed. When he, when he wrote the Necronomicon, he used, and scholars have isolated these passages, he used whole passages of the Babylonian Enema Elish seven tablets in his work and some other fragments from Near Eastern texts. Then he mixed those with some uh, uh, old, old medieval Arabian occult traditions. Then he mixed those with creative license and created what we know of as the Necronomicon. So I, sh I have a whole video on the Necronomicon explaining the fact from fiction deal, what was, what, what was actually going on here. Because the, to me, the Necronomicon was doing the exact same thing that many of the biblical books were doing teaching very deep, truthful things in the form of a fictive story. Yeah, I'm not on board with old Tesla's electric cars. Not on board, but he's being groomed right now to be mankind's savior. Yeah, he's being groomed right now. The, the pendulum is in full swing. Even the social network groups are, are allowing more and more people to say more and more things because they're trying to they're trying to get the pendulum to swing full motion to the other side. And the liberals and socialists are realizing, those in power are realizing that their funding's been cut, their their power has been cut, and even the media has been directed to act against them. Yeah, they're taking their own medicine right now all over the world. This is this was all predicted by me 18 months ago when I did my isometric analysis of, of the future of the future two years. And this is in my predictions playlist. This is, these predictions are are easily to do and they unfold all the time. You guys send me emails when they come true. It's because not no no particular genius of my own. It's 100 percent because we live in a controlled structure. Yeah, our holography has structure to it. It's like a, it's like a holographic architecture. So being like an architecture, we can employ isometric analysis and we can see that historical events have predictive value. It's very easy to do. Very easy to do. The Great Pyramid is Divine Message by David Davidson. Yes, it is absolutely fantastic. Great book. It's a great book. Written in 1926. Uh, he wasn't the only one. Uh, he had a fact checker called uh, a name H. Uh, Aldersmith. They wrote the book together. That's crazy. Checking your, checking your chickens for bird flu, huh? That is so crazy. That is so crazy. I don't know. 2,072 people in the chat. 2,100 likes. I love you guys. I love you guys. I appreciate it. I just want to let you guys know that this video is over. This presentation is concluded. I enjoyed it. It's two hours and almost 20 minutes. So, uh, smash, if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it. You to affect that algorithm by smashing that like button and know in all things, my brothers, you got to break free or die trying. You got to not give a eh, beep about anybody's opinion. And you just got to be like Nike. You got to do it. Yeah. And that's exactly what I do. And the haters can keep on hating because they're bringing quality individuals to my channel. And I appreciate that. Bye guys.